Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Life After Work. I'm Solomon. This is Easter Day and I'm kind of kicked back right now, getting ready to smoke me some ribs. And I thought I'd put my first piece of detailing on to this cab. So what have I started with? Well, I'm doing this pressure gauge. Unlike the plastic pressure gauges that keep breaking off of these, they basically just have one tab and it's it's the one that goes behind the gauge and in this case there are two holes and there's a tab under this and a tab under that and it just fits perfectly it's absolutely perfect now I haven't glued it down because I've got to paint it and I'm going to paint it off of the cab but it was a two second job getting that on and it's such an improvement I'll paint this black and I'll get the uh, little tiny faces, I guess you call them faces, uh, the printed face and I'll put that on after it's painted and glued on to here. So that's gone on quite nicely, I'm, I'm pleased with that. So what I've been doing today, just sitting here quietly, is I decided to start putting this uh, air brake pump together and, and I thought I'd start at the top, work my way down. I got a drill bit the size of this brass rod that I'm using for the new piping pieces I'm putting on that didn't exist on the model originally. And I drill through the governor and I drill through nut to nut on the back of this top piece which I guess that's the compressor itself so anyway I uh, I've got this uh, put together this is three pieces and I'll super glue those together and then I'll gradually work my way down because I want it to set up good also I'm gonna move the camera I clean this piece up a bit because this little piece right here and let me make sure I get the names right on these yeah that's the silencer filter that goes right there let me set it up here that goes right there so I'll glue this in try that again I'll glue that in place that'll get this piece and then it's just a matter of uh, putting the different sections together so this is this is a matter of a few minutes to put it together I am however and I don't know how much this will show I am flattening off some of these surfaces there wasn't what you would call flash on it uh, a little bit obviously you're always going to have a little flash in a casting you also have swelling and shrinkage and, and Truthfully, I wanted, when I put these pieces together, I want them to fit very, very nicely. It fits on extremely well. So I'm just going to work my way through these little pieces. And as I put them together, I'll, I'll do a little filing on them. I'll get them cleaned up a little bit. But uh, the fun has begun on the Bumblebee detailing. Okay, what I've decided to do is to go ahead and start drilling out some of these rivets now I don't know if you'll get a good picture of this I'm using the old back head that I don't like but I wanted to experiment with this and and what I'm doing is I'm drilling out the old rivets putting in these pin heads well the pins and they stick out in the back they'll be cut off later not on this one because I'm having a problem actually drilling out the pinheads and the problem is they're so tiny I'm trying to go to each one of those old rivets figure out a way to punch them in such a way that my drill bit will go through them because this drill bit is incredibly tiny let me show you Oh boy, you're not even going to be able to do that. It's very, it's just incredibly small. Therefore, it wobbles a lot when it's drilling. Well, I've, I've tried several things uh, to keep it from wobbling. I've even taken 
a screw. I know this screw is fairly large uh, to what you might be thinking I would be using, but that point is incredibly sharp. I have tried to center it on some of these rivet head points and frankly that doesn't work uh, so I've taken a punch and the punch the purpose of the punch was to just press down these raised rivets that you see so that I could take that screw and put a dimple in it. Well, a couple of these have worked. One of them hasn't. So I've got a lot of work to figure this out. Now, I've got the other back head because I have the extra back heads. You know, that's not a big issue. Look at these, the heads of these pins. Perfect rivets. They're just perfect. So I've got to get the process down on how I'm going to continue that because I've got dozens of these to do. Let's try something a little bit different on this back head with these rivets. What I'm going to do is take my plastic scraper. I don't know if I'll be able to get that in focus. And I'm going to take them off. I'm just going to take one of them off and see how difficult that is to do. Well, that wasn't difficult at all. It's totally gone and I can still see the location. Now let's see if I can, without any great fanfare, let's see if I can get it to drill properly. I can get my light correct on this. And the camera really needs to be on the other side. So let me see if I can move the camera. There, maybe this will work better. What I've done is I've taken off using my styrene chisel, my modeling chisel. I've taken off one of these rivets So I'm now going to come in, put this little tiny bit right here in the place of the old rivet. Remember my problem was, was the wobble in that drill bit on the top of that curved rivet surface. So I'm going to do this very slowly. Still wobble. Now, I took just a hair more off. I didn't, I thought I had it all off to begin with. Let's see how that did. All right. There we have it. You see that? Went through perfectly, didn't have any problem. So what I've got to do is Using my chisel, take each one of these rivets off one at a time and get them really, really flush. So I'm going to put these pins back away because I don't want a bunch of little tiny pins all over the shop. I'm not exactly a neat freak, but I'm probably in my shop here. I'm a bit of a neat freak. So let's, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll start See, I was worried if I sanded this down, I'd lose the location of these rivets. But it looks like if I do it like this, 
that I can still see the location. So I'm just going to take a row of these off. And I'm not really worried about scuffing the back head with the chisel because I will, I'm, I'm actually scuffing that nasty paint that's on there. And I'll be taking all of that off. There. Now let's see how many of these I can drill without doing any further harm to anything. Starting with this bottom one. I'm going to turn some of this light off and put more of a precision light on it. Well, my hand keeps getting in the way of the light. Alright, here we go. Okay, that actually doesn't seem to be taking too awfully long. Now let's see what it looks like with a row of pins, which represent my rivets. Okay, turn the lights back on, get a little light on the subject, and this is what my rivets are beginning to look like. Now I've got one out of position slightly, so I know that when I do the, the final one, that I'm probably going to have to go back to this this tiny chisel tip screw and once I clean one of these off just kind of press it into that flat surface and make sure everything's aligned correctly but when this is covered with these it's going to look a lot more impressive I think than not having them also some things that will go away. I'll just use my chisel to point. I've got this support here and this support here. Now those are not supposed to be depicted as a solid piece. I'll fabricate those out of styrene because they have to come out considerably further and there's like four pieces of styrene to make one up. Uh, this piece should be mounted to the floor of the cab. It's the brake handle. This goes over to that compressor that, that I'm replacing. But it should be a separate piece. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up rubber molding this and casting it in resin. Uh, this will give me the front face. I'll cast it again a second time and cut the handle off the top and put them back to back and hopefully end up with what will be a three-dimensional one. You won't see the back, but it'll be able to stand proud of the boiler. I'm replacing, of course, the throttle. I'm replacing the sight glass. I'll be replacing the door, but whether it's a round one or... If, if I'm going to get the rubber molding compound, I'll take this shelf off because I'm replacing the shelf, and I'll... Basically, I'll rubber mold what's left, but I'm going to do it after I get all the rivets off I'll take the pins back out and that way when I make the rubber mold I can just cut out the pieces I want which will be this fire door uh, the brake controller part of this 
sight glass. And I'm not sure what this is up here. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm at a loss for that one. But I'll be doing some research to see if I can figure that out. So this, this is a method that will take care of my rivets and I'll keep working away on them. And once I get the, get all the rivets off, get the holes drilled, I'm ready, shoot, I'm ready to assemble. Uh, I've got a magnet. I'll get all of this stuff with my magnet. Here we go. Where there's a will, there's a way. And only one of them went to the floor, so got it. These tiny pins have already been magnetized. But I won't bore you with all the details of putting this back together. There we go. So anyway, that's going to be my path forward. Now whether I continue to do it on this one or go straight to this one is debatable. I think I'm going to go ahead with this one. Get all the holes all the rivets off of it, the holes drilled, and this will probably be the one that I will, that I'll pull the rubber mold off of. That's it. I'm going to move on with something else now. And, and by the way, doing those, I have been wearing my magnifying glasses because trust me, if you don't have those and you're my age, you're wasting your time. So anyway, I'm still enjoying this, and I've got uh, I've got some progress, making some progress. So that's just on the bumblebee. Back on the New Jersey tomorrow.